I tend to be snarky and sort of uh, snide towards people or organizations that I think are distant enough. And then if if one of them comes up to me, then I suddenly instantly feel really terrible about it. Like, I get frustrated at Microsoft products all the time. And, like, I'll, like, just tear into them. But then, like, some employee responds, like, oh, we're sorry, you're having trouble. And I'm like, oh. And I go from, like, ravenous wolf to, like, little bunny rabbit instantly. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm laughing, but, like, it's kind of not a good thing to do. I mean, I... I don't know, man. Like, it's acceptable targets, oh, big faceless companies, but then, yeah. Just in general principle, though, I feel like maybe I shouldn't be doing that or don't really want to be doing that so much because it, yeah. Like, I still feel bad on that angel load of dev thread when I, when I just, like, I, and I wasn't trying to be insulting. I just, like, unthinkingly sort of put this, like, oh, angel load of scan is super fast. Let's compare it to new dark loader, which is, like, way less fast. Because, like, I, yeah, well, that was different, though. Like, that wasn't me trying to snark. That was me just not realizing. Because, like, I, I'm used to working by myself and, like, thinking, like, one inanimate thing is better than another inanimate thing, and like, let's see how better I can make my thing than another thing. But like, things are made by people, though, and I kind of forget that a lot. I also like to watch rants. It's a guilty pleasure. I, I'm sorry. I, I am. Like, I, <laughs> you know, like I like a good Casey Muratori rant or whatever. It's like, but I mean, it, it's not helpful though, really though, because like, there's all kinds of stupid bullshit in Angel Loader, and like, I mean. <laughs> it's not like it's not like my thing is so great and that avoids everyone else's mistakes and like I mean sh like I even do some shit in there that I claim to be against like oopy stuff that you can't follow there's a little bit of that even so like I kind of need to just shut up I guess but yeah like um our soul who made new dark loader is now like telling people to switch to angel loader and I'm like I don't know like I like, I mean, in that dev thread, I apologized, and he accepted, but I still feel bad, and, yeah. That's why I kind of just try to keep my distance, because I feel bad. I'm like, eh. And I'm prone to getting frustrated. You know, I get frustrated when things seem, like, illogical, or, or when seem things seem to be like... I don't know why, but my brain just doesn't like... When something is purported to be one thing and it's clearly the exact opposite or seems to be. <laughs> Often it isn't, but just seems to be. And then I'm just like, ugh. But it's like... It, it's strange because in some cases I actually can put aside that frustration and actually then I really like it. Like I like surreal shows or like media or stories or works. Surreal works where, where you... Like I love... Marty Python, I love Homestar Runner, where, like, things just happen for no reason, and, like, Bub's like, I'm selling wireless extension cords, and Homestar's like, I'll take three, and then, like, slides up the side of the screen, like, for no reason, just because it flows, like, a weird shit happens just for no reason, there's no explanation for anything, but I don't get frustrated, I really like it, because I guess sometimes, I don't know, sometimes I'm able to, like, accept that that's what's gonna happen, and then I enjoy it, but, like, in real life, I just can't stand it somehow, even though it's the same thing. Like, I don't know, people just... <laughs> I, d I don't know, but it's a thing, yeah. Like, if a, if the computer says, such and such file doesn't exist, and then I look right there in the folder and it blatantly does exist, I'm like, what the fuck, you're saying? Like, my brain just gets into this loop where it's, like, trying to reconcile opposite things and it just can't. It, it's like trying to, like, push two rare earth magnets together, like really strong magnets, but with anti-poles together, like they just, you, you can't, and you push and you push and you try to put them together, but they just don't go together because they're opposites. It's, I get stuck in this loop in my head and it's just super frustrating. But then sometimes in certain situations, like when I'm watching a show, I'm able to like completely accept opposites that contradict and not find it frustrating. So I don't know. But like that's, that, like, pretty much all the time when I'm angry, almost all the time, when I'm angry, it's that. It's me just, it's, like, just frustration. 
It, it, it's like I am frustrated at something that seems to be one thing, but then it's the other, like the two things that seem opposite or that something that seems logically contradictory. And it's just infuriating on like, like no kind of intellectual. It's like I'm not angry because I have some philosophy about this. And I'm like, it, it's just like visceral, just like my brain can't deal with this anger. 99% of the time when I'm mad, that's the kind of mad that I am. Angry, not mad. I am mad, but whatever. <laughs> um, only rarely do I feel like a kind of deeper anger, like I actually feel angry about something because like, I thought about it or something to do with my values or whatever. But like most of the time, it's just petty bullshit, like I'm frustrated. <laughs> so that's interesting, maybe, or not. The last time I put up a boring video, people say, it wasn't boring. So there. Every time I go up here while talking, I go down this side. What about going down this side? Huh? Ho, 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 that's new, that's right. But yeah, like I just, I just lose my shit when, when I feel like someone is saying something that is false and they know it and it makes no sense or like things are not in the nice clear order. <laughs> but then of course if they are in a nice clear order then they kind of get boring and lifeless so you know <laughs> we're never happy are we? Anyways I hope you liked that last video. Actually I don't care. I put it up without editing except for the parts. Like I edited the parts that like I said a line and then flubbed it and, and I was just like cutting out the flubs because I meant to like say no no this is going to be the line but like uh, I don't think I edited anything else. I kept it all in there, even if I'm wrong or awkward or cringe, because that's the buzzword everybody likes to say. It's cringe, <laughs> but they're probably just covering for their own embarrassment at their own cringe by being snarky. I don't know. That's what I would do. But I just feel like, you know, wouldn't it be better if instead of me being really nasty and vicious to someone and then apologizing when they come up to me, what if I just skipped right to the not ever being nasty and vicious and just, yeah... Like, wouldn't that be nice? Like, the Rebellion of the Builder, too. I think it was, too, with the mission with the key cards and then the, the mission with the math equation that relied on Windows Notepad function or Windows Calculator functionality with the Enter key and then the that one castle mission and all that. Like, I stand by, like, the the basic substance of my criticisms. Like, like that one puzzle was trial and error. I'm like, I don't think they should be trial and error. Or, like, the math thing that wasn't correct because you need to put it into a calculator and hit an enter an extra time and then it's correct. Like, I stand by basically me saying this is, I'm gonna, like, this is a thing I don't like. But I was really nasty and Gort came into the comments and, and talked a lot so, like, I guess he doesn't hate me but, like, man, I feel bad and even that, even that one video where I, I called it a mostly constructive critique, there was this one part at the start where I was still really nasty and snarky, which was like, why the fuck did I keep that in? Like, I guess I just couldn't help myself. But, like, yeah, I actually like Gort missions. I mean, I would... Yes, I stand by the criticisms. Like, I think those things could be made better, and I would like them more. But there's a lot of good things about Gort missions. They're incredibly creative, technically accomplished, extremely memorable, and... I always remember them fondly when I'm done. <laughs> but, you know, like, man. And I mean, lots of authors say they like my videos or that they've been helpful or whatever, so I guess I'm not too bad. But, you know, yeah. But I mean, I guess it's good that when, like, a real person comes face to face with me that, like, my anger just disappears because then I'm like... Because it would be bad if I was, like if I was this infuriated with real people standing there, like, you know, because that's, like, a different thing, I guess. I guess that's good. Like, I'm not, like, I don't really mean it. I'm just frustrated. And if there's a real human being there that I can see that, it, okay, they're not perfect or, like, I'm maybe mistaking something or, like, they're just a person. I just, I get, like, ah! so I guess that's good. So, yeah. But I don't ever have people around me because I'm a hermit. I guess I'm, I'm a hermit. I am I am something. That much is certain. I guess I'll play Celeste soon again because like, I don't want to forget completely where I was and how to play it before finishing. I do want to finish Farewell because I rage at that game, but I love that game. Like, uh, fair, the, thing, the thing is that game, how I feel about it really depends on how good a D-pad I have. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, that Farewell thing... Having a D-pad that is even slightly suboptimal that will even ever give you false diags or whatever will really ruin you. Like, when I was playing Celeste for the first time, 
I had a dodgy D-pad, and I was really getting frustrated. And then I, I bought this adapter for my Wii uh, Classic controller, which at that time had a perfect gamepad, D-pad. And it was it was like night and day. I was sudden. I was like, "Wow, this is way more enjoyable. I'm loving this now because it's that precise." <laughs> so, I think for that farewell thing with the squid, like the thing about Celeste, what I love about the gameplay is that each room is is like this. You can feel it, it's this palpable progression. At first, you have no idea what to do and no idea how to execute it, even if you did know. So, like, you keep playing and and you bash your head against the wall over and over. But then you learn, and like, I'm looking at my footage, I can see my progression from me sort of going slow through the room and not quite knowing what's going to happen to me just like playing in a way that shows I've got the pattern down, like I'm just confidently, it, it's like it teaches you the pattern gradually, and I really like that. It's, it's, it's smart. But yeah, another thing is I'm uh, like, I'm trying to um, be less, um, oh, what is the word? I could say scared, but I want to say something more pretentious. Less shy about... That's not pretentious. <laughs> less shy about putting up videos saying s stuff. Cause, I don't know. I have these bouts of bravery, and then when people like them, I, I, I end up being super conservative and like, oh, I'm not going to say anything again. Like, <laughs> but, but like, oh man, I still have this raw footage on my drive that I could make into a video. And I've just been like, eh. Yeah, it's the longer version of the last No Controversy video, except it's got contra Well, I don't know. It's got contra Whatever. Um, but yeah, like, I hope that last video sort of starts the trend, because I'm nothing if not a trend starter. <laughs> yes, thank you. So yes, these things are meant to teach you how the triangles work, so yes, like, if I would have played this game all in one go, I would remember this, and probably be able to do all those puzzles that I keep skipping through, so... Yeah, now there's that. God, I really hate that phone ringing sound. It's like so <laughs> irritating. It reminds me of the phone that used to ring ever because A, I used to live with my parents who actually talked to anyone ever and they the phone would ring. And also it was an old-fashioned phone with the ringing like that instead of these new ones who just have ringtones like which I think I still have, which is surreal. It's, uh, it's, I'm just a changeling, whatever fate brings, I'm still the same, I was born to make believe. The Sameling by, oh, forget who it's by, and then somebody covered it. The cover was actually quite similar, but oh well. Yeah, I forget. I think Denotive maybe covered it, but I don't remember who they, oh, I don't know, credits! God, it's been forever. <sighs> Truly a first love, I guess. You look back on it with this weird mix of like... It was a really good time, but at the same time, I'm just... So distant from it. I'm, I'm, we're very far apart now. Yeah. I'm not ever going back. It's It's done for me. But it was really great while it was there, you know. The world was sparkly and full of magic in a way I'd never felt before. Mm. I'm talking about MLP in general, not denotive. <laughs> that got awkward. Check it out, chocolate. Ba, 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 ha, ba, ba, de, ba, de, ba. That's not quite the notes, but oh well. I am really fucking tired. It is like, I don't know, three or four in the morning or something. <laughs> Might be four. four. Oh, deedy, 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 deedy me. Um, this grass is nice. Let's eat some. Also, I kind of... I like things to be simple. I guess a lot of people do. I like... I like clear-cut answers, which I guess is not unusual. But, you know, that's why I also... So like, uh, If someone is offering me clear-cut answers, I may be slightly susceptible. Like, I want the truth, weirdly, even though... Like I say in that one song, the search for the truth is the biggest fucking lie. Because it's just... You never find it, and <laughs> all you end up with is all these things people say, and you're never quite sure what's right, and it may all be subjective anyway. But just have this weird drive. My logical part has this drive, because the programmer mind in me, the programmer brain, I should say, it's not worthy to be called mind. Come on, it's not, it's not, it's not colorful enough for that. <laughs> the programmer brain in me is like wanting things to be like they are in programming. We've got clear-cut bools. They're true or they're false. Or if they're a number, then at least they're always the same number. 
and everything is really easy to understand. If there's a problem, you can find it, you can fix it, and then it's actually fixed. Like, try that in real life. It, you can't. There, there's no clear-cut fixing of anything. There's no clear-cut truth value to anything. It's frustrating. It's, I mean, it's also what makes life not cold and dead like a computer, but it's also annoying. I don't know. So that's the appeal of computers. That's why they're so addictive in their comfort, because, like, they, they, they're so unfulfilling and bleak kind of but at least they offer you clarity and and they when they say something they mean it and you can always fix problems because everything is just logic there's no annoying incomprehensible shit which can also be fulfilling incomprehensible shit if you look at it differently i guess you know but you know and i mean yes sometimes they are incomprehensible but i mean in principle they never are right like in principle they're never doing anything weird. It might seem like they are, but you know that if you dig deep enough, you can find out the reason. There always is a reason. There's never, like, not a reason, right? So they kind of speak my language, but at the same time, they're so cold and dead that it's, like, comforting in a really lifeless way that isn't really actually feeling good, but at least it's not feeling terrible <laughs> but i'm like so not really into tech the way i used to be i used to be like excited about tesla cars and electric cars like oh they're like computers on wheels and i'm like ugh they're computers on wheels I, I, i'm just craving something more natural and analog these days something with life in it because like i don't believe for a second digital computers will ever be conscious. I'm fucking sorry. That's not happening. It's just a light switch. Just because you shrink it down and put a zillion of them doesn't suddenly make you sentient. So that is my view. I can't remember if I've said it before because I keep cutting things out of these videos. But, you know. So what happens if you just stand here? <laughs> what happens? Does the walk monster eat your brains? It's well designed. <laughs> but yes, what I mean is I do have the potential in me to be rather, um, like, dogmatic and black and white because it's frustrating that every answer you find is actually just super, like, oh, but, you know, maybe it isn't, though, maybe sometimes not, that, like, sometimes I just want a clear answer, and when someone offers one, I just get a little bit, like, militant about it because I'm like, arg, stop making it fuzzy, just... Do this, just let this fucking thing happen without constantly trying to fuzz it and be like, eh. <laughs> so like, yeah, that's kind of why I am so adamant about constantly, like, speaking against dogmatism and that sort of thing. It's, it's, it's partly me trying to, like, remind myself not to be that way is really what it is, you know what I mean? Because I'm prone to being that way, so, like, I need to sort of try to balance myself out and pull myself back a bit. But at the same time, it's possible to go too far that way and, like, never do anything. Like, if you never take a stand on anything, because you're always thinking, like, oh, well, there may be things against, oh, but there may be other things, and, like, then you always are just forever in this loop of, like, everything you come up with, you just question it to death until it fuzzes out into particles again, and then you put them together into something else, but then you question it to death until it fuzzes into particles again, and you never end up really getting anything done or having any real sort of stances, which I feel like that's not maybe necessarily the best thing. I mean, I don't know. Because, like, in the end, you still got to make a decision of one sort or another. And none of them are going to be perfect, I guess, but, like, you still got to make one. So maybe taking a stand on something is not so bad. I mean, if you really feel like you want to change it later, you can. But eventually you got to make some sort of decision. One day I'll talk about my real hang-up that I never talk about. Um, if I, as, as I keep on this bold path. Yeah, um, I'm freaking tired, so I'm going to try to edit this and see how it sounds. So, like, um, uh, everybody sit in some palm trees and make out with your lover if you feel like it. And don't let Nump Dandy stop you. Especially not Mrs. Mrs. Whatever your face was. I don't remember. I don't remember the names, or maybe I do, but I'm just not saying them because that would be rude and possibly an invasion of personal ability to not be named by a guy who's like a million years older and still bitter about it. Anyway, that guy's juggling. Uh, it looks like he's going, why, God, why, my 401k plan, but no.
He's just juggling while being sad. I mean, I don't know. I guess he doesn't like juggling, but he's doing it anyway. Oh, so deep and profound. Oh, so deep and prof. Oh, so deep and profound. Oh, so deep and profound. I'm just going to keep all of those. <laughs> I'm not even going to cut. That's just what you get today. Oh, am I still recording? I thought I was going to say something else, like, uh... <sighs> There's no right size of porridge bowl. Eh, good enough. Bye!